Do you own or rent your home? Sure you do. And I'll bet it can be hard work. You know what's easy? Bundling policies with GEICO. GEICO makes it easy to bundle your homeowner's or renter's insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing, too, because you already have so much to do around your home. Go to GEICO.com, get a quote, and see how much you could save. It's GEICO easy. Visit GEICO.com today. That's GEICO.com. Let's go talk about the future for Michigan State basketball. Kyle Austin, MLive.com, Spartan Hoops Insider is standing by on the Meyer guest line. And Kyle, when you look at the end of this season with Gonzaga losing in the finale to Baylor and you look ahead to 2021, what are some storylines you think that will dictate the offseason and lead into the start of next season for Izzo and Spartan basketball? You know, I think it's all about uh, who they've got coming in. You know, they got a really good recruiting class uh, led by Max Christie, uh, you know, a five-star wing out of Chicago, who I think is going to start from day one. Uh, then you got Jay Nakin, the kid from Michigan, and Pierre Brooks, who could who could be, uh, you know, the best player, uh, high school player in the state of Michigan right now. So three really good guys coming in. And then um, you, they uh, added the uh, transfer point guard and Tyson Walker from Northeastern he scored 18 points a game there. And I think they're hoping that he's the guy who kind of solves their, their point guard issue, which I think was their biggest issue for last year. So uh, certainly you're going to have some key returners too um, and some guys that develop, but I think uh, there's going to be a lot of focus on, on the new guys going into next year. More talent next year on that Spartan basketball roster than we witnessed this year. How would you gauge that? The guys coming back for next year? No, I'm talking uh, as a whole. Will there be more basketball talent on the Michigan State roster 2021-2022 than what we just watched this past pandemic season? Oh, I think there'll be more. There'll be more talent next year. I mean, you lose an Aaron Henry, um, and you know, obviously, he was a do-it-all guy for them, and that's a big loss. And and Rocket Watts is out the door too, but. Um, you know, they, they haven't had a McDonald's All-American on this team since um, since Sharon Jackson in 2017-18. And you're going to have another one coming in, Max Christie. Um, uh, you know, you're going to have the really high-level point guard in Tyson Walker. So, um, you know, it's not going to be, you know, among his most talented, but I think you are getting a step up. I think they did have a bit of a lull talent-wise this year, and I think you're going to be working your way back up. And I think you mix those guys in with veterans, I think. You know, Gabe Brown could be a big guy. I think Marquis Bingham could kind of take a jump for them. And I think you could get back to back to the level that you're used to in East Lansing. Henry, when you look at the upcoming draft, uh, where do you think he's going to go? Uh, how high would you say? Aaron? Yeah. You know, I uh, I would say probably early second round. Um, I, I, I think if he, if he works out well, you know, however they're able to do the workouts in the interview, I think if he works out well, um, maybe he could get into the first. Um Teams are going to like his versatility. He's got good size. You know, he's physical. He defends. Uh, but I still think um, his lack of, of shooting um, is kind of cold, holding back a little bit. For everything he did well this year, his shooting um, he still didn't improve all that much. Uh, so that might hold him back. But that's something he could certainly improve on in the NBA and go from there. Kyle Austin, MLive.com, Spartan Basketball Insider, talking Michigan State hoops on the Meyer guest line here on the Huge Show across Michigan. Tom Izzo, uh, a big conversation, it seems, almost every offseason, how much longer. And it's not a negative. People are just maybe concerned, wondering, uh, is he going to be around coaching for the next four years, ten years? Uh, what's your take on that? You know, I, I was interested to see, uh, I saw Lon Kruger retire uh, this offseason, early in the offseason. You saw Roy Williams retire. And, and both of them, to a certain extent, kind of set, talked about the state of college basketball um, and, and that being a factor in their decisions to, to hang it up, whether that's the, um, some of the rule breaking and cheating you've seen that hasn't really gone punished yet uh, or whether it's the transfer portal and the fact that you've got a thousand guys, uh, just about one out of every four college basketball players is, is switching teams this off season. And I think, I think to old guard coaches and coaches of time as a generation, that's, that's not what they really had in mind. That's not what they signed up for. And Tommy's always been vocal about the fact that he's not a fan of that. So I, I think if the sport kind of keeps going in this direction, if they do immediate eligibility and if more guys keep entering the portal, that is one thing that I think could kind of sway him to, to hang it up a little bit earlier. But I, I still don't think that's immediate. You know, he's got Steven on the team for two more years. I think he'll at least see that out. I, I would guess it's probably in the five-year range. But, I, but how the direction the sport goes could certainly play a role in that. Too. Yeah, the the likeness issue, which has been discussed multiple times on this show, 
How, how as a head coach are you going to control that when you have no control over a player and his schedule for appearances or likenesses or, you know, likeness royalties? Uh, he wants to go to a car dealership and sign autographs and the rest of the team isn't cashing in. I just wonder with with we're talking teenagers and young adults, how that's going to mesh if only one or two guys are making cash off the likeness and the rest of the team isn't getting a dime. Yeah, it's going to be a, it's going to be a challenge for these coaches with chemistry because you mentioned a key word to me, which is control, and they don't have control. This is designed for coaches to not have control over it, and um, you know, coaches they they like having as much control as they can possibly have. So that um, that'll be interesting. I think it's gonna it's another dynamic to, to manage in the locker room, and um, you know that it, it's a fact of life that not everybody makes the same amount of money. Uh, but I think when you've got a lot of kids at the same age, and it could be you know it, you know. It could be hard for some kids to swallow that the guy sitting next to you uh, is getting paid more than you or is seen as more valuable um, than, than you. So that's it'll be a challenge, uh, and, and you know there's already enough challenges right now coaching the sport. So I'm sure uh, I'm sure that'll be another one. Uh, and think of the other one will be that one-time transfer. How how wild is that going to be? It's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy, yeah. Uh, and you know, just you know, I, coaches like Tom Izzo who really value their. Um, building year to year and having these guys like we've seen so many at Michigan State um, who stay all four years, maybe struggle for a year or two, but really kind of blossom as a senior, um, as a junior and senior, and you see get better from year to year. I mean, that's that's you know a coach like Tom Izzo. That's among his favorite parts of the job, and and I think the worry is that you're just you're not going to have that anymore. You know, when a kid struggles for a year or two, they're going to leave and and go somewhere else, and you're not going to have the the continuity. You're going to be rebuilding your roster every year. You're not going to see the the same type of chemistry you've seen with players. Um, I think you know of all the issues in college basketball, I think for Tom Izzo, that's probably going to be the biggest one that. Um, if it keeps going the way it is, and Michigan State has had far fewer transfers than most, um, but if if they start kind of getting sucked into this world of rebuilding their roster entirely every year, uh, I'm not sure that's going to be something that he's going to be very keen on doing very much. Kyle Austin, MLive.com, Spartan basketball insider, joining us on the Meyer Guest Line. It was interesting to see last night the ESPN way too early top 25 college basketball rankings for 2021 and. 2022 and there's Gonzaga at one UCLA at two Purdue at three Ohio State at four Kansas five Maryland six Villanova seven Alabama eight Florida State nine Vodtech 10 Baylor uh, who won the national championship at 11 Uh, you also have Arkansas at 12 Duke 13 Syracuse 14 St. Bonaventure at 15, Arizona 16, Michigan 17, North Carolina now with Hubert Davis as their head coach at 18, uh, Kentucky at 19, Oregon 20, Colorado State 21, Michigan State at 22, uh, preseason top 25, and Belmont, Houston, and uh, West Virginia. Yeah, Gonzaga uh, making it up and at number one, and State and Michigan there. It'll be interesting to see uh, what Izzo does with bringing a ton of talent together. Kyle, thank you so much for the time. Always appreciate it here on the Huge Show across Michigan. All right. Thanks, Bill.